Today I was wondering if clouds contains water, which is heavier than hair, why this giant of the sky does not fall into the ground and still they are able to stay airborne for such a long time. Today I'm gonna give you an answer. Let's go. So clouds can be made up of tiny droplets of liquid water or small crystal of solid water, but not water vapor. Water vapor is the gaseous form of water, which is invisible, it has no color, and it's completely transparent. But let's set aside vapor for now and focus on clouds as we see them. To understand why a cloud remains suspended in the sky and does not fall, we need to consider the forces acting on it. Imagine an ideal scenario. Let's assume that there are no significant air currents, so no wind, and that the flow is laminar, so smooth and without any turbulence. In this situation, we can identify three main forces acting on our little cloud. Let's go. So, we have our little cloud right here, which is trying to fall to the Earth, and we have three different forces. Let's start with the gravitational force. So, we have the mass of the cloud multiplied by the gravity. Second, we have the buoyant force, where the equation is telling us that we have to multiply the density of the air times its volume, so the volume of the object itself, and again, the gravity. Last but not least, we're going to have the drag force. In fact, when this giant is moving, of course, it's going to create some kind of drag. And the best equation I found to model this situation with the assumption that we did is this. 6 times pi multiplied by the dynamic viscosity of the air times the radius of each tiny droplet multiplied by the velocity of the droplet itself. So our goal is to determine if these forces balance themselves or if the cloud is going up or down. To do this, we are going to calculate the hypothetical terminal velocity of the cloud. If it's zero, we know that the cloud is going to stay still. If it has some values, we will see if the cloud is going up or down. Let's go. So, as I said, we put everything together in a way that we are going to have the gravitational force equal to the sum of buoyant force and drag force right here. So to calculate the terminal velocity of the cloud, we need a few key parameters. First, we need the density of air and water. Second, we need the viscosity of the air. And lastly, we need the radius of a single water droplet that makes up the cloud. So for our case, we assume that we have a diameter between 5 to 50 microns for each droplet. Of course, this is an assumption. So if you plug in all these values into the formula, we get a really, really interesting result. So we have a terminal velocity which is different than zero. Actually, we get 0 0.01 meters per second, or in other terms, one centimeter each second. So actually, the cloud is falling, but at this speed, even though the cloud is technically falling, its motion is so slow that our naked eyes cannot see moving. So I know we make some assumptions along the way, like laminar flow and no wind, which are kind of a crazy assumptions to do in a classical environment. But still, with those assumptions, we calculated that clouds actually are falling to the ground. I hope you liked the video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.